second. All right. One of HTML's main main jobs is to give text structure and meaning, also known as semant semantics, so that a browser can display it correctly. This article explains the way HTML can be used to structure a page of text by adding headings and paragraphs, emph emphasizing words, creating lists, and more. Um, prerequisites, okay, we did that. Um, the basics, headings and paragraphs. So, most most uh, structured, huh? No, go ahead. Most structured text consists of headings and paragraphs. Whether you are writing or reading a story, a newspaper, a college textbook, a magazine, etc. Um, structured content makes the reading experience easier and more enjoyable. In HTML, each paragraph has to be wrapped in a P element, like so. Um, each heading has to be wrapped in a heading element. There are six heading elements, h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6. Each element represents a different level of content in the document. h1 represents the main heading, h2 represents the subheadings, h3 represents the sub-subheadings, and so on. Okay. So implementation of structural hierarchy uh, as an example, in a story, H1 would represent the title of the story, H2 would represent the title of each chapter, and H3 would represent subsections of each chapter, and so on. It's the crushing boar, Chris Miles, okay. Chapter one, the specter speaks. I'm just gonna copy this into my page just to see how it looks like. I guess I gotta make a new folder. Uh, uh, I wonder if you'd be able to do this. Copy. What is this section called? Mm -hmm. Text fundamentals. Source console. <laughs> No, you can't change it. Okay. Cool. Oh, by the way, you can right click and then you can say format document. So it'll make everything look nice. I'm not sure if that messes anything up, but it's a, this? a lot better in visual code. Yeah. Hmm. You don't have a lot on yours, so it doesn't really change anything, but if you have a bunch of code, it makes it nice. Crushing bore by Chris Mills. Okay, true. All right, that makes sense. <clears throat> so it's really up to you exactly the elements involved, what the elements involved represent, as long as the hierarchy makes sense. You just need to bear in mind a few best practices. Preferably, you should use a single H1 per page. This is the top level heading, and all others sit below it in this hierarchy. Make sure you use the headings in correct order in the hierarchy. Don't use H3s to represent subheadings, followed by H2s to represent sub-subheadings. That doesn't make sense and will lead to weird results. Of the six heading level available, you should aim to use no more than three per page unless you feel it's necessary. Documents with many levels, deep heading hierarchy become unwidely and difficult to navigate. On such occasions, it is advisable to spread the content over multiple pages then. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm just finishing this apple. Hold on. 
I don't know. Do you think? Uh, so why do we need structure? So to answer this question, let's take a look at text start .html. Take a look at this. Okay. Uh, okay, so basically it looks like a giant jumble mess. Is there a way to view it here? I don't think it's hosted, so, That's well, not. unless it is. I don't think you can. Okay, so, so well, basically they have it. It's just like a really long yeah, paragraph. Like a, okay. This is because there's no elements to give the content structure. So the browser does not know what the heading and what the paragraphs are. Furthermore, users looking at a web page tend to scan quickly to find relevant content, often just reading the headings to begin with. We usually spend very short time on this web page. What is this? How long do users stay on web page? Okay, very short time. If they can't see anything useful within a few seconds, they're likely to get frustrated and go. Search engines indexing your page consider the content of the headings as important keywords um, for people's search rankings. Without headings, your page will perform poorly in terms of search engine optimization. Severely visually impaired people uh, often don't read web pages, they listen to them instead. This is done with a screen reader. These softwares provide ways to get fast access to given text content. Among the various techniques used, they provide an outline of the document by reading out the headings, allowing their users to find the information they need quickly. If headings are not available, they will be forced to listen to the whole document read out loud. Okay, so to style content with CSS or to make it do interesting things with JavaScript, you need to have elements wrap, wrapping the relevant content. So CSS and JavaScript can effectively target it. Therefore, we need to give our content structure. All right, um, active learning, giving our content structure. Let's jump straight in with a live example. In the example below, add elements to the raw text in the input field so that it appears as a heading and two paragraphs in the output field. If you make a mistake, you can always reset it using the re reset button. If you get stuck, press the show solution button to see the answer. So live, live output, my short story, blah, 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 and in the code, okay. So I'm guessing this should be the heading, and we'll close it right after, so H1. So my short story, and then afterwards it's going to be two paragraphs, they said. So. Okay. Uh, why do we need semantics? Semantics are relied on everywhere around us. We rely on previous experience to tell us what the function of everyday object is. When we see something, we know what its function will be. So for example, we expect a red light, traffic light to mean stop and a green traffic light to mean go. Um, things can get tricky very quickly if the wrong semantics are applied. Do any countries use red to mean go? I hope not. Mm. In a similar vein, we need to make sure we are using the correct elements, giving our content the correct meaning, function, and or appearance. In this context, the H1 element is also a semantic element, which gives the text that wraps around the role or meaning of uh, a top level heading on your page. This is a top level heading. Um, by default, the browser will give it 
a large font size to make it look like a heading, although you could style it to look like anything you wanted using CSS. More importantly, its semantic value will be used in multiple ways. For example, by search engines and screen readers, as mentioned above. On the other hand, you can make any element look like a top-level heading. Consider the following. Uh, span style, style font size 32, margin 21 and 0. Is this a top-level heading? Close span. This is a span element. It has no semantics. You, you use it to wrap content where you want to apply CSS to it or do something to it with JavaScript without giving it any extra meaning. You'll find out more about these layers later on in the course. We've applied some CSS to make it look like a top level heading, but since it has no semantic value, it will not get any, ex any of the extra benefits described above. Mm. It is a good idea to use the rele relevant HTML element for the job. Okay, I'll just put this into my code and see how it looks. I mean, sort of. I like missing the bold. Where it is. There we go. Looks a little bit better. No, it looks kind of like a top level heading. All right. Up next are lists. Let's turn our attention to lists. So lists are everywhere in life, from your shopping list to the list of directions you should subconsciously follow to get to your house every day, to the list of instructions you're following in these tutorials. Lists are everywhere on the web too, and we've got three different types to worry about. So we have unordered, Unordered lists are used to mark up lists of items for which the order of the items doesn't matter. So let's take a shopping list, for example. But I swear these are ordered. Oh, wait, no, never mind. That's the, that's the line of the, not the, the number of the line. Okay, never mind. So every unordered list starts off with a UL element. This wraps around all of the list items. And then the last step is to wrap each, L, uh, each list item in an LI, list item element. Here it actually tells you it means list item, <laughs> unlike free code Now you know. Uh -huh. I'm surprised it doesn't say this one stands for unordered list. Oh. Uh, active learning, marking up an unordered list, so try editing. A live sample below to create your very own HTML unordered list. So they said everything goes in an unordered list. And then every one of these gets its own LI element dash li and then Okay. Show results, and that's what we get. Sweet. Up next are ordered lists. So ordered lists are lists in which the order of the item does matter. Let's take in a set of directions, for example. 
So first you have to drive to the end of the road, then you have to turn right, then you have to go straight, then you have to turn left, and then the school is on your right. So the markup structure is the same for unordered list, except that you have to wrap the list items in an OL element rather than a UL element. Okay. So it's basically the same thing. Just that. Because of this. So OL. Um, then it's well, like, an ordered list will be numbered, I believe. Instead, mm. I kind of make this annoying to do. <laughs> Okay, and then you have one, two, three, four, five. Show solution, it's the exact same thing, sweet. All right. All right, active learning, marking up our recipe page. So at this point in the article, you have all the information you need to mark up our recipe page example. You can choose to either save a local copy of our text.html starting file and do the work there, or do it in, in the uh, editable example below. Doing it locally will probably be better as you'll then get to save the work you are doing. Whereas if you fill it in the, okay, you won't be able to save it here. Okay. Uh, just, uh, I'm just going to copy this. <laughs> So they want us to, okay, I see. Make this header. So this one's going to be H1. Uh, this recipe, let's do it like this. So this recipe makes quick, tasty hummus with no messing. All right. whole thing is going to be in the P under P tags. And then this thing is going to be under P tags. And then we're going to have H2. One is going to be a I'm make this an unordered list. Mm -hmm. Look the best. And this is going to be.
And then I'm going to make ingredients or instructions on H2. And then this one's going to be an ordered list. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this an ordered list. All right, mine looks way better now. Um, okay, for different flavor, you can try try MMP. It's gonna be paragraph. Storage. This is also going to be an H2. Did you do yours in the uh, editor they gave you or in the... I did it in Visual Code. <laughs> Way easier. Yo, yeah, well, kind of, I'm kind of hating how, let's say if you have like an H2 tag and you open it, it closes it automatically for you. Um, I mean, if you don't already have stuff uh, that, that needs to be inside of it, it's really useful. Um, I feel like there was a way to like highlight what you want inside of the tag and then make the tag around it. I feel like there probably is. I just don't know. Do you know there's a way to have multiple cursors? There's a way to do what, sorry? If there's a way to do multiple cursors. Cur 
multiple cursors. No. Like for like for typing, you know. Oh. That'd be interesting. Because I know in uh, in Sublime, you can have multiple cursors. I just don't know if you can do it in Visual Code. All right. Okay. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, what I just did is selected the text, push Control X, which cuts it, made the tag, and then Control V. It wasn't too hard. For a different flavor, experiment and see what works for you. Oh, I should have made mine the same H tags, or headers. I like four different headers. The H twos. For this one, I feel like there you go. We can actually change it up a bit to make it look a little bit better. So I feel like if move this up, shit. Let's move this over one, and then we'll give it and. I'm over the list. Yeah, that works. Okay, so I'll probably be a little bit better. Sure. All right, that looks pretty good. Title quick like one PP is the one list for that two P which two P P. Oh, sweet. Oh, they just uh, they didn't do a list for the last thing. I made mine look really nice by putting the uh. If you want a coarse and if you want a smooth hummus, I'll, I'll put those inside of EM tags as well. Coarse and smooth, what? Uh, like the the texts <laughs> right below your ordered list, the two like sentences. Yeah. I put those inside EM tags as well. To like emphasize them. Yeah. Okay, all right. So I wonder if you can put it into bold. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, put it into bold text instead. There you go. I made mine into a different list. All right. Yeah, I, I made a separate ordered list and then put them into bold. Bold text. Also, you can if you highlight text, you can move the text around. You just grab it with the cursor. Mm, okay. okay. Let us continue. Mm. Uh yeah okay. So up next is nesting lists so it's perfectly okay to nest one list inside of another you might want to have some sub bullets below the top level bullet let's take the second list from our recipe example okay oh we did this oh true okay we did do this okay okay sweet uh yeah so basically it's a list inside of a list you just call the list inside of a list you have the ul closing ul and then the li elements try going back to our previous example um and updating the second list like this all right ahead of the game all right you want to do the emphasis and importance yeah uh 
emphasis and importance. In the human language, we often emphasize certain words to alter the meaning of a sentence. And we often want to mark certain words as important or different in some way. HTML provides various uh, semantic elements to allow us to mark up textual content with such effects. And in this section, we'll look at a few of the most common ones. Emphasis. When we want to add emphasis in a spoken language, we stress certain words, subtly altering the meaning of what we are saying. Similarly, in a written language, we tend to stress words by putting them in italics. For example, the following two sentences have different meanings. I'm glad you weren't late. I'm glad you weren't late. <laughs> the first sentence sounds genuinely relieved that the person wasn't late. In contrast, the second one sounds sarcastic or passive-aggressive, expressing annoyance that the person arrived a bit late. In HTML, we use the EM element to mark up such instances, as well as making the document more interesting to read. These are recognized by screen readers and spoken out in a different tone of voice. Browsers style this as italic by default, but you, sh you shouldn't use this tag purely to get the italic styling. To do that, you'd use a span element and some CSS, or perhaps an I element, see below. Okay. Okay. That's the EM tags. Strong importance. To emphasize important words, we tend to stress in spoken language and bold them in written language. For example, this liquid is highly toxic. I am counting on you. Do not be late. In HTML, we use the strong element to mark up such instances, as well as making the document more useful. Again, these are recognized by screen read readers and spoken in a different tone of voice. Browsers style this as bold text by default, but you shouldn't use this tag purely to get bold styling. To do that, you'd use a span element and some CSS, or perhaps a B element. See below. Oh. Here we use strong tags. You can nest strong em and emphasis inside one another if desired. Okay. Okay. So basically, the EM gives you an italicized, but that's not what you're supposed to use. That's only for like screen readers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with strong. Okay. But instead that gives it bold. All right. Active learning. Let's be important. In this active learning section, we have provided an edible example inside of we'd like you to try adding emphasis and strong importance to the words you think needs them just to have practice. Okay. Um, so I am going to put emphasis in the important notice. Yeah. On Sunday, January 19th, a gang of goths were spotted stealing several guarding gnomes from a shopping center. I'm going to italicize the date. Oh. Emphasis on them. Uh, let's see how that looks. Um. Has any information? Now put an emphasis on please contact the police. Now in the strong tag. Okay, sure. Good enough. Good enough. I don't know what else to put in there. I don't want to like overdo it.
Damn, okay, they went ham. <clears throat> uh, okay, italic, bold, and underlined. So the elements we've discussed so far have a clear cut associated semantics. The situation with bold uh, italics and underlined is somewhat more complicated. They came about so people could write bold italics or underlined text in an era when CSS was still supported poorly or not at all. Elements like this, which only affect presentation and not semantics, are known as presentational elements. They should no longer be used because, as we've seen before, semantics are so important to accessibility and search engine optimization. HTML5 redefined bold, italic, and underline with new, somewhat confusing semantic roles. Here are the best rule of thumbs that are likely appropriate to use. To convey a meaning, traditionally conveyed with bold italics or underline, provided there is no more suitable elements. However, it always remains critical to keep an accessibility mindset. The concept of italics isn't very useful to people using screen readers or to people using a writing system other than the Latin alphabet. So, I, uh, so underline, I mean, sorry, so italics is used to convey a meaning traditionally conveyed by italic, foreign words, taxonomic designation, technical terms, a thought. Bold is used to convey meaning traditionally conveyed by bold. Uh, keywords, product names, lead sentences, and underline is used to convey a meaning traditionally conveyed by underline. So proper name, misspelling, stuff like that. Okay. Kind of warning about underline. People strongly associate underlining with hyperlinks. Therefore, on the web, it's best to under un underline only links using the U element when cement semantically appropriate. But consider using CSS to change default underlining to something more appropriate on the web. The example below illustrates how it can be done. Okay. So the Ruby, so italics. So it italicizes the Latin word for what is it, Latin word? Taxonomic designation for hummingbird. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and then also italicize the, the different languages. So it also put language tags in all of them as well. Mm -hmm. And then the underline, it has a style sheet, it has a style tag to it. So text decoration line, underline text decoration style, wavy. Okay. True. All right. Summary. That's it for now. This article should have given you a good idea of how to start marking up text in HTML and introduce you to some of the most important elements in this area. There are a lot more semantic elements covering this area. We'll look at it a lot more in our more semantic elements article later on in this course. The next article will be looking in detail at how to create hyperlinks, possibly the most important element on the web. Okay, sweet.